Okay, everyone, we're so excited to see you. Thank you for joining us this evening for our first national series on distance learning. My name is Ann Nutter Kaufman. I'm a manager within our teacher quality here at National Education Association in Washington, DC. And I have the pleasure to uh, introduce um, several of our members who will be um, really helping us learn in the next um, hour or so. I also upfront wanted to let you know we are recording and we will be posting the, re the recording online. We'll give you that link at the end so that there's no, um, no, no confusion there. So I'm gonna pass it over to our illustrious executive committee member, Eric Brown from Illinois, who is going to bring us some greetings. Eric? Hi, everybody. Um, first, actually, can we go to the next slide? I, I, I wanna first um, acknowledge that the National Education Association is committed to honoring the spaces that we occupy to advance our work we begin by acknowledging that we meet on traditional lands. And Chicago, which is where I am, is located on the traditional homelands of the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations. Many other tribes, such as the Miami, the Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Sac, and Fox, also called this area home. This region has long been a center for indigenous people to gather, trade, and maintain kinship ties. And today, one of the largest urban American indigenous communities in the United States resides in Chicago. Members of the community continue to contribute to the life of the city and to celebrate their heritage, practice traditions, and care for the land and waterways. So we honor America's first people and all elders, past, present, and emerging. And we are called upon to learn and share what we learn about the tribal history, culture, and contributions that have helped shape America. Again, I am Eric Brown. I'm a high school biology teacher from Evanston, Illinois, and I serve all of you on the NEA Executive Committee. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed life across the planet. In much of the United States, it began in March when many area schools, well, many schools across the entire country, actually, flipped on a dime and began remote instruction. Now, what did remote instruction look like? That depended on decisions at your district level. What will remote instruction look like coming up in the, in the near future for most of us? Um, that also depends on your district. So what should instruction look like? Well, let me tell you, remote or in person, the students that I speak with tell me this is what they need. They need trauma-informed activities and social-emotional learning strategies. How important is that in the COVID era? They need access to more school-based health professionals. They tell me that if you can fund standardized tests on student literacy and numeracy, you can surely invest in assessments on our student well-being, especially, again, in the COVID-19 era. And they tell me that they need culturally responsive supports and approaches to their academic and social-emotional education. My students have long told me that they want their voices included in what they learn. Again, I teach biology, I teach at the high school level, so they're very, very clear about what they want. <laughs> they want learner agency. They think that education should be personalized, relevant, and contextualized. It shouldn't be open-walled. It can't just take place in my classroom. And again, in the COVID era, we have an opportunity to show our students that learning can take place in multiple places and spaces. And they finally think that it should be socially embedded and competency-based. Wow. That's a lot, even during the best of times. However, we are not in the best of times. We are facing a challenge, the COVID-19 pandemic. However, again, we are educators and we're gonna, we're gonna face this challenge together as we have so many others in service of our students and our community. Today's webinar scratches the surface of what our students are saying they need, but it also shows one way that we are supporting each other in our professional work right now. My local union had a webinar last week on best practices for remote instruction, where we brought in a few of our colleagues who taught summer school. What I learned last week is what you're gonna learn today. No one has all the right answers. What we do, what we do have, what we are gonna learn from are our colleagues. 
And they're going to be sharing their best practices around distance learning that we can, again, learn from, but we might also have to adapt. And we're going to want to share these strategies ourselves. So learn, adapt, and share. NEA has experienced ed tech staff who assist our members to help develop these webinars and also develop other resources. And you can find a lot of those resources if you go to the website, educatingthroughcrisis.org. That's one big word, educatingthroughcrisis.org. And at the end of our time today, please fill out the short evaluation form so we can identify other topics of interest and you can help us design our next webinar. And so without further ado, let's get to this webinar on teaching and learning. I want to welcome my colleagues from Michigan, Chris Thomas and Ellen Brooks. Please take it away. Wow, like Eric, that, that was amazing. It's, the response in the chat while you were speaking was, was amazing. We, we appreciate mm -hmm. your words and uh, where we started and where we are and where we're going. And, and you're absolutely right. Everybody in the room here, we are, we are, you know, we are educators, we are members of the EA, and we are here to, to lift each other up. So Ellen and I um, are, are thrilled to, to be uh, the facilitators today. Um, we do want to just, now that we've got over, you know, now that we're getting into it, we, we want to tell you, like, look, this slide deck we, we built for y'all. Um, we want you to share it, uh, the, the pieces that work for you. Um, there's going to be something that you can take away and, um, and share that with your colleagues um, and just remind them, like, this is, this is from your EA, right? Like, this is, this is a, definitely a member benefit. Um, we're also, you know, I, I know your phones are like right next to you, right? So um, if you could, um, it would be great, we think, if we could kind of keep this community growing, like as long as we're doing, as long as we're going to do the webinars like this, um, it'd be nice if we had a space where we could come back and share good ideas, uh, you know, li liberate them for ourselves, um, and, and, and kind of go from there. So we're, we're using the hashtag NEA Ed Practice. Um, as, as the hashtag. So whatever your platform, that's the hashtag. Um, we're, we're excited. We're excited to, to, to join with you there. Um, while I'm still talking, I just, I just for a quick second, I just have the great pleasure to introduce my friend Ellen Brooks. She is an enthusiastic and energetic um, ed tech expert um, with just gobs and gobs of experience in, um, in elementary school and, and now, now sixth grade. Um, she has been um, running any uh, any running webinars, uh, just like all of the, all the webinars I think has been <laughs> uh, over the summertime, and uh, and has facilitated learning I think across uh, thirteen or fourteen different states uh, in in sessions like this. So it's just like my great pleasure to be here tonight with Ellen. Oh, Chris, and you guys, the only reason I'm here is because of Chris. As a as a new teacher in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I. Uh, took a advantage of a program to learn more about educational technology, jumped in feet first. Chris brought me on. I helped facilitate that. Chris is not a man who is content to just like help his students. He is reaching out nationally. This is all kind of on his shoulders. He's the one that stepped up and said, hey, I have a community here that has some know-how that we should share with everyone because maybe it will help even one person. So Chris Thomas is not just an educator and a man of science. He is someone who cares deeply about educational practice and he's put a lot of time and effort into this. So it is my pleasure to present with Chris Thomas. Oh, thanks Ellen. I, I really appreciate that. Like we're, you know, we just happen to be kind of at the right place at the right time, knowing the right people. Like our, um, we were positioned uh, and had been considering the, the, the quality use of, of educational technology for years and how to, how to leverage that ed tech to make sure that you could like do something different and, and exciting and support students. So when the pandemic, when, when, when March kind of finally rolled around, we, we realized that there was quite a community of educators yeah. here uh, locally that we could, we could use as resources. So we're, we're happy to be here tonight. Look, give us a follow on Twitter and your, your phone's in your hand. Uh, connect with us there. Uh, we'd be happy to. We'd be happy to connect for sure. Yes, ready to uh, listen. And just so you know, we've got four facilitators. These amazing educators. Um, you'll probably see them again if you keep coming to these. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen, Karma, Leslie, and Bill uh, are 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 here. They're man in the the Q and A. And as you pop your questions in, they're doing their their level best to to uh, respond to you as, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Let's get started, Ellen. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it's time. We've been preparing and preparing. 
Uh, welcome. <laughs> so uh, it's very important for Chris and I, we know that this is a huge audience. We know that there's going to be a lot of traffic on the slide deck. So please be patient. Know that this is being recorded. This is available to you. You'll get it no matter what. Um, but we want to start with a check-in. So it's really helpful for us to kind of read the room and it's helpful for everyone else to know that we're all kind of in the same boat here. And uh, we're going to start with our check-in first. All right. So um... Ellen's going to drop the link in the chat. Oh, she just did there. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, um, if you wouldn't mind just like filling out this quick Google form, uh, there's just three questions. If you don't get there, it's totally fine. Um, we can, um, we, we, we're just like reading the room. Um, so we, we wanted to take just a second and kind of like uh, share with you our, our definition of synchronous versus asynchronous through this example. So right now we're like having this synchronous opportunity, this real-time supported participation, but also at the same time there's this like asynchronous piece that's going on. It, did, it doesn't have to happen in this Google form uh, right here, right now. It could happen at another time. Um, but but we, we just want to like point this out. We also want to point out on the previous slide that this is kind of a teacher move, right? So you can kind of see uh, you can kind of see where you're, where we're going for the day. We're highlighting the bit that we're dealing right now, that we're doing right now, and we um, are... Excuse me, Chris, can you uh, speak up a little louder or turn up your volume? Okay, how's that? I think that's better. Thank okay. you. And this is also a teacher move that shows how we are scaffolding the organization uh, of our day, um, and you can kind of see what's coming up, because I don't know about you, but I always like to know uh, when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Chris, can I interrupt you for just one second? Sure. Uh, we're getting a lot of requests for you to t uh, turn on captioning. If you're able to do that in Google Slides, I can send you a link that shows how to do that for accessibility. Okay, I think I can see it right here. You got it. Bottom. Thank you. I, yep. I wasn't sure how to do that. There you go. We're learning yep. something new, too. Got it. Okay. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, this is the hey, first time I've Chris, you're genius. <laughs> ah, this is what we do. We help. We figure it out. Humility is a big part of ed tech people. Like <laughs> a huge part. Right. And and thanks, Bill, for thanks, Bill, for uh, stepping in and helping us out here. Um, you got it. We also want to, uh, as you're, if you're in the Google form, you've already seen this question. But if not, we want you to notice that like we're kind of asking you to think about this as a continuum, right? Like where are you at? Zero is you have no idea how to plan for distance uh, or learning or hybrid learning or five, you have a good plan in place for that distance uh, hybrid learning. Um, just so we can kind of define that um, hybrid learning, uh, excuse me, distance learning is, is classroom teachers are engaging in students outside the physical space. Hybrid is that, oh my gosh, it's that space that's driving us all crazy, right? Like. Um, my hybrid learning is going to be different than your hybrid learning, which is going to be different than the hybrid learning down the street. Like, right. oh, it's all the figuring out that, that we're all having to do. And, and just like, it's making it hard to collaborate, isn't it, Ellen? Uh, desperately difficult. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to try to, we're going to try to address a few of those things today too. And then the second question of, yeah, this, the third question rather is, uh, you know, zero. I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed. And, or five, you're feeling like. And you're allowed to do just for today because uh, I'll wake up, Chris and I will say all this all the time. We'll wake up and we're like a four or five. And we're like, I know what I'm doing. And it all falls to pieces. But at the end of the day, you're a zero and you got to work your way back up. So don't take this one too seriously. Absolutely. All right. But we also need to remember some things that we, that, that we learned in the, in the fall, or excuse me, in the spring uh, and not forget them. Look, we, we know that what was happening in, our, in your classroom, like you, you can't replace it with ed tech, no, no matter what we do, right? Like there, there's no way to substitute what was happening in our classroom with what is happening at a distance. And we just have to, we have to like, we have to be okay with that. We need to be able to prioritize um, the things that we can do be clear with our directions, find our people, collaborate whenever possible, and do our, do our best to, to collaborate, excuse me, to communicate efficiently and effectively. Um, let's look at that. Let's Take look at the Google form and just see, let's just see where everybody's at. Right, so this is, uh, right, this is, this is old hat by now, right? Everybody, everybody is in uh, to Google form. Um, but what's nice, what's so nice about Google Form is it's such an easy way to collect formative assessment data uh, from your from your audience, right? Your, it could be could be uh, something like this or your students. Yeah, the so, great thing is that it works in both modalities as well, synchronous, asynchronous. It doesn't matter if you do it early or late; the data's still there. 
Okay, look at that, Ellen. Planning for mm -hmm. distance learning. We're moving. Yeah, that would have been way different like two months ago. <laughs> we, absolutely right, right? Like it used to kind of look like that, but now we're kind of mm -hmm. shifting more towards the middle. It's good but, to see. But this is, this is uh, you know, like I, I mean, I, for me, like I feel like I'm kind of a, a, a three-ish at the moment. Like it's, it's still not 100% clear what hybrid is going to look like for us. And it, it's changing. It's always changing. And then overall, we're, we're feeling, okay, we, we've, got, we've got a few people that, that are ready to, ready to rock and roll. We've got 14. Uh, we've got about 100 fours. Uh, and the rest of us are, are in this space where we're still really looking. We're looking for supports. We're looking for our teams. We're looking for ideas. So we're hoping that we can share that out, share some good ones today. In the chat, I do see a question about asynchronous. So synchronous, like in synchrony, like think of like a like an orchestra, right? Everybody all together playing at once. Whereas asynchronous would be more of the like accessing at different times. So if somebody watched a recording of this webinar, they could still access this webinar, webinar and all the materials, but it wouldn't be at the same time as the rest of us. So that would be asynchronous. Good. So we want to talk about this elephant that Ellen created, right? So now notice our, our teacher move, right? We're done with one. It's been struck. It, it, we've we have, uh, put a strike through there, and now we're on to access and equity. So we realize that this is not the topic of this webinar, but how can we how can we talk about education in America uh, this spring without a without having this quick conversation? So Ellen, do you want to talk about your um, elephant that you made here? Yeah, early on, we were trying to like pick the best metaphor for what was happening. The elephants in the room kind of came to represent to us the fact that there are children and families that do not have reliable access to internet. We are sacrificing a lot of our quality practice. We were kind of in a scramble mode in, in March, uh, which is when Michigan closed down, basically. So uh, there was a lot of a lot of people knew this. We understood it. We didn't have a, a way to do anything about it at the time. We can only do what we can do and we do the best that we can with it. And we're building in scaffolds for the future, which is so important. But this elephant is a great way for Chris and I to sort of key in and remember that equity is important. Accessibility is important. Uh, everything that you've been thinking about how difficult this is and how it doesn't serve some of your families, all of that is so valid and true and right and it needs to be acknowledged. So when you see the elephant, it's Chris and I's way of, of reminding ourselves and you that we understand that this does not fit every, every student, every family, every classroom, um, but we have to do the best that we can. Absolutely. And I think that, um, and so you, you'll see the elephant kind of pop in the bottom part of the slide there uh, periodically. John, you can come pick the phone. And, uh, and, and we'll do our best to, to address that. So like we know that this is just one it little thing, right? Like we're, right we're doing kid. on this one piece, but uh, there's, there's these overarching, just like huge systematic issues that need tending to as a, as a society, a culture, a country. Um, but today we're, we're just gonna talk about distance learning. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on. So, Moving on, weekly planning scaffolding. So I think this is probably why most people are here. Um, let's, now look, I guess, Ellen, we need to like make sure that the secret's out. Like we don't have all the answers. Wait, did you get the answer between five and, between 5 p.m. and seven? Like, I don't know. No. no. No, we don't have the answer. But what we do is we have, we do have a lot of practice and experience thinking about how, uh, what quality might look like. Um, we have a lot of practice and experience thinking about um, how to use different scaffolds uh, to support your thinking. And we want to share a few of those with you today. So one of the biggest, most important things that we forget to consider is ourselves and our own health and wellness. Uh, this is a big topic and it's one that we're always sacrificing. So we are going to start with this so that you can't get away with it. Um, you have got to take care of yourself. Uh, building a routine is key to this, finding your supports, whoever they may be, and balancing your online and offline. So there's a really helpful article here from uh, Michigan State University who ha that they have a great uh, educational technology sort of whole master's program, which is beautiful. They have tons of resources resources. This article is from like the minute distance learning happened. They were ready to assist. So this is a great resource for you to sort of like check out their blog. Um, this article is lovely, but it boils down to three things. 
routine, support, and balance. So the, the additional points of that, right, are you have to be forgiving to yourself for not having done whatever it was that came before, uh, being unsure of the future, these are okay. You have got to find those victories and celebrate them. And if you're not familiar with the Marigold story, it's very popular with, uh, with new teachers. Uh, if you know the Marigold story, if you wanna throw an M in the chat, just to, so I can see a thousand M's because it brings me joy, you can. Um, but the Marigold story is basically the idea that if you surround yourself by, uh, surround yourself with happy, um, joyful, positive thinking people. They take care of you just like marigolds are very sort of caretaker plants. They're beautiful to look at. They shelter the plants around them. Whereas a walnut tree is slightly acidic. It sort of poisons the things around it. People can can be walnut trees and you're allowed to be a walnut tree in this situation, but you have to look for those marigolds who can kind of pull you out of it. So a good example is my own dad, right? He's, he's worried about me for the fall. He sent me the article, the link on the side there, and it was just one teacher's like musings about what went well for him. And it's like all stuff that I've thought about, but I just love that my dad was like, I saw this random article and thought that it would help, you know? <laughs> so he's one of my marigolds. So it's really important that you find your marigolds, you cherish them and you go to them when you need them and you try to be a marigold when, when someone needs you. Right. And it's okay that so you might start the day as a marigold and, uh, and, and you don't live there the whole day. And that's, that's okay too. That is, that is okay. Mm -hmm. All of these links are available to you on the slideshow. Um, so once you, once you start considering yourself and how you're fitting into this puzzle, you've got to set up those routines and boundaries. So for me, in the, when I shifted to home, it was a big shift. And this is a checklist that really helped me. If you don't mind showing them the teacher version, Chris, this was something that helped me sort of stand back, see the big picture, and break it down. Again, this is another uh, tool developed by Michigan State University. But this is very much a, how are you going to talk to the parents? How often do you have them in an email list? What, how is it going? <laughs> what do you have to remember? This is for parents, students, and workflow. So the workflow piece was most important for me. Um, I really struggled with workflow. I was on my computer all the time. It was not healthy. Uh, and below that, they also have to mention, right? Like people are dealing with crazy priorities right now. Remember, there are lots of different family responsibilities getting in the way. This is a great, like, wait, start, start again, figure it out from, from scratch. So if this is helpful to you, please take it and run with it. There's a version for uh, teachers and for administration as well. And if you go back to the slide, you'll notice that there's my own schedule there, which Chris likes to show people. And I'm sort of like embarrassed about what. No, I, I love it. But before I we do that, I want you to, so, I want everybody to notice this piece right here. Whenever oh, you yeah. see this like little save, these are things that you might want to make a copy of and drop into your own Google, uh, your own Google Drive or save it to your desktop. Um, yeah. This is a, this is a really great place to onboard, right? So like if you, um, if you were in a district that was maybe didn't, um, didn't, didn't plan, right, didn't have a distance learning, it was, the, or, or uh, on a computer, maybe it was paper or pencil and you're, you're just now starting to have those, those thoughts. This is a really good place to start. Oh, and, and yes, we definitely need to look at the schedule because I, I, I tell you this all the time, Ellen, like it really made me feel like a human because I was yeah. spending too much time um, in front of my computer. Like everybody, if you were, if you did like more than 12 hour days in March, like just go ahead and just, if you had to guess how many hours in a day in March did you work? Like, um, uh my what husband would pop his head in and be like, hey, hey, it's like eight o'clock. Maybe you should log off. And I'd be like, ah, I'm working, right? Like it was madness. Um, this you, was I, me, right? Jo this Josh was doing 25 hours a week. Like, no, Josh, no, yeah, no. Josh. This, was my, this was my come to the light moment. I sat down with my colorful pens and I scheduled it out. And I told myself, this timer means this and this time means this. And then when I didn't do that, I felt bad enough about it that it made me check my own thinking so I could at least pause and like evaluate my personal like wellness before I kept jumping into it. So if it's as simple for you as jotting down some notes on a piece of paper, do that. You cannot, you cannot do your job. You cannot do this unprecedented job without a little bit of the self-care and maintenance too. So I hope this is a helpful view for you. Yeah, absolutely. And setting timers, like that was, that was great for me. Like I needed, I needed those timers because I was like Josh, like 25 hour days. It was just ridiculous. So, you know, I, in the before time we used to, we would turn our teaching brain on a lot of times when we got in the car to drive to school. And, mm -hmm. and then we would, I would check my email before, uh, before our social emotional check-in and homeroom. And then I would prep with my buddy, Steve, uh, during period one, right? Like everything was down to the minutes 
And then all of a sudden there were no minutes, there were no bells. So like creating that space to take care of yourself. Yeah. Critical, critical. Don't forget. Don't pretend like you didn't hear us tell you either. <laughs> That's for true. Ellen, uh, while I do the slide, if you wouldn't mind dropping that in the chat, dropping the link to no the- No problem, uh, slide there. got it. Uh, there was a few people asking. So the next thing you might want to um, you might want to save here is uh, a planning sheet. So again, this is this is kind of like a place to onboard, right? Um, but what is really familiar? You know, what I like about this is just that it's so familiar, right? Like, you know, this, you got this. You're going to see this and be like, oh yes, lesson planning. I know you. Um, the only things that are are new and different are the pieces around uh, distance learning. So the parts that are dealing with um, kind of like the learning platform and uh, the communication plan, for example. Uh, this is taking a while to load. I'm starting to get impatient. There we go. Okay. So um, you'll, I mean, you look at this and you're like, oh yeah, I, I can do this. Learning goals. I know those. Technology platforms. That's, that's not a big reach. I can, I can, I can manage those things. I, compartmentalize. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I Google Classroom. I got this, right? So you kind of just like work your way through. And this is, this is a nice resource developed by the NEA uh, teacher quality division um, that, that was available pretty early on. So perhaps you've even seen this before. So this is a, another thing that if, if it's helpful for you or, or people in your building or in your, in your education community, um, you might want to share this out with, uh, with others for sure. All right. So we're considering the fact that you've, you've taken a moment and you've taken many moments and you'll continue to take moments to pause and like get your self care in your community. You you've got to understand your students and your district and, and your technology that you have available is the next step, right? So where you can start is, is a template like the one that Chris just showed you. So once you have some idea of like where you're going, it's important to sort of vet out some of the technology choices you have available to you. And there's a couple ways we're going to show you to do this. Uh, one of our best advice is to talk to your friends, to talk to your people that you work with, your coworkers and colleagues that are right down the hall from you. Um, another is this readiness checklist that actually gives you uh, advice. You want to talk to people, try these three things. Uh, so Chris is going to show you that checklist now. Yep. So what's really great about the checklist? So in, in Michigan, we have like 840 school district or something like that around the state. And then there's one that is purely online. It's called Michigan Virtual. It's a public school. Um, and they're charged with quality um, distance learning, well, like quality of uh, virtual learning, I guess is really what they're charged with. But um, they were also well positioned, turned on a dime, and were able, they were able to get this out to, to educators right away. And what I love about this is like, really like who doesn't love a good checklist? Like, yeah. come on, let's just be honest here. <laughs> so you could, you could, I mean, you could print this out, right? Or you could look at it digitally, and then you could kind of assess these different areas and be like, okay, communications. Uh, I use a digital tool to communi com communicate with parents. Like you can be like, okay, I email, I have a website. Uh, communicate with students, uh, email, Google Classroom, check, check. I use a digital tool that allows for video conferencing to facilitate real-time discussions. Well, on March 13th, maybe you didn't, right? So like look below and, and they, they hot link directly to, um, to a piece of an ed tech tool that probably you've heard about um, and that people around you have used. So you can, then, you can then kind of like start filling in some of these gaps as you're going through your checklist. Yeah. So I love, love, love. A good checklist. We talk a lot about the gaps, right? Like you might have this tool that does this and you might have that tool that does this, but there's a lot of logging in and out. What if there's one that does all of those things? There's these little gaps that you need to fill. So you don't need to like scramble and like do random Googling. We are going to, we want you to have resources to look at that. Right. Um, so next slide. Oh, it's our guy. It's our bud. It's this is my friend. <laughs> I found him on the internet and shamelessly <laughs> stole him. Uh, he comes along with a meme that's all about like logging into 400 different places and how hard it is. Um, and this is yeah, how we all end up looking. And we'll see that later. We'll see that later. Yeah. So the, the trick here is that there's, there's too much EdTech out there. There's way too many choices. There, it's massive and overwhelming. So Chris and I are asking you to stop. Use what you know first. Use what you know first. And then when you have those gaps and you want to fill them, you have to do it slowly and with great purpose and with practice. And you check with your friends first, you check with the people you know, you check with your Twitter people, you check with your whoever it is. 
And then you can use a resource like Common Sense Education, which is real teachers being actually like paid for their 100 side gig to make a living uh, to review <laughs> ed tech and to really say like, this is really valuable. Here's a one, two, three word summary. Here's a rating on privacy. They have really great uh, review, like credible. This is where I go when I want to, when I hear the like, the little like chime of a new tool. And I'm like, I wonder what that is. I don't listen. I go to, I go to common sense first. <laughs> right. And a lot of us in the room, like we, we hear, we hear the dings, we see the bright shiny lights of the new ed tech tool, but like really now it's super important that we, that we put, we select our ed tech tools with purpose and we work on them together as a team. So that way they're rolled out um, and, and used widely. Because uh, if you have kids at home, you you know how annoying it is to to get to try to figure out a tool um, without without any kind of context or support. It's it's difficult. So take it slow. Talk to your friends. Check check with experts. Vet it out. So another struggle that I have with ed tech, as much as I love ed tech and I love using it in my lesson planning, uh, I get overwhelmed and I jump into too many things and I'm using things that aren't really saving me time or, or meeting learning goals in any spectacular way. Uh, so there is a researcher, her name is Liz Cole, she's from U of M and she has sort of, this is her baby, is the triple E framework. Uh, and this is something that grounded me as, a, as an educator that was new with ed tech. So I actually would have this rubric printed out and put on my table and when I was thinking about using a tool, I would stop myself and I would look at the rubric and, and really ask myself the question, am I meeting learning goals by engaging students? Am I meeting learning goals in an enhanced way? Am I meeting learning goals in a way that wouldn't be possible without the technology? Because we all know that pen and paper is magic in its own right. We don't need the technology just to say that we can use it. Our situation now, of course, is a little extreme, um, but this is a great resource. These are actual rubrics that you can plug in your own variables into and it will spit out for you literally word for word. This is a high rated piece of technology. We think this is great for you, or maybe this is kind of a waste of time. You should look at something else. So this was a great touchstone for me. So we thought that it might be helpful to you as well. And what's great about this is like, you know, this, this just, just to like uh, brag about Dr. Cole for a second. She's a researcher at U of M. Um, and she, she has always made herself so available and accessible to public school educators here in Ann Arbor. Um, and it just so happens that she has this like totally relatable uh, skill and need that, we, that we've been interested in for years. Now, Ellen, tell us, tell us your story about this like Tripoli rubric. Like, it's not like we just found this in March, right? You've been using this for years. Tell us, tell us your story. I feel like it was like four or five years ago, I was at a training in Ann Arbor when I first heard about it. And I was like, what are you guys talking about? That sounds cool. I hadn't even like, like I, I thought I was all in the know. Um, and it turns out that EdTech isn't always the best answer. And this is one of the few resources that isn't just like do all the stuff. It's like stop doing all this stuff and consider it. So that was really hard for me. I wanted to use all the stuff and have kids logging in and out. And that guy's like, in the corner, right? So for me, I actually, I printed this out. Eventually I didn't have to look at it, but I had it on my, on my desk near my plan book. And I, when I was like thinking about, oh, I could have them do this and log in here and do that. I was like, wait, these are first graders. <laughs> these are first grade children. We haven't done that yet. It's going to take a little time. It's a, it was a pause button. It really served as a space for me to stop and evaluate my own thinking and the process and how it would affect my students. Absolutely. And I, I really, this is another thing that you might want to consider like saving and, sh and uh, sharing with other people. It, it really helps you answer that, that question, well, well, should I use it, right? Like, is this something that I want to use? Yeah. Um, so the next one we want to share with you is um, the 5e instructional model. This has been around for quite some time, but uh, Catlin Tucker, a blended learning uh, expert, um, she uh, has a PhD in educational technology and uh, is, 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 has been writing books and uh, kind of going on the going on the ed tech circuit for quite some time now. Um, kind of man changed it so that it was more applicable to distance learning and, ed and quality ed tech integration. So what we like about this is like um, it, it kind of gives you it gives you a framework to like hang your lesson, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's like these these different components, and if you click on the link here in the uh, in the slide deck right up here where it says five E's, it'll take you directly to the rubric, uh, and you can print that out and leave that on your desk at home or at school, wherever wherever it is that you're you're teaching from, um, and because we know that that a lot of times the hybrid 
you know, the hybrid model, really what you're doing is it's, you're, you're designing high quality distance learning curriculum. It just so happens that some of your kids are going to be in front of you physically in your classroom some of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if that's, if that's kind of how you're thinking about your hybrid option, like you still want to make sure that everything that you're creating has this like high quality, um, high quality distance learning uh, compatibility. And hanging your instruction on this 5e model, we'll, we'll show you um, what we did here uh, in my classroom um, in the fall. So you can kind of just see what an example looks like. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and we'll have an opportunity, but, but this, but this uh, provides like that framework and support as we're trying to figure out how do you start like by engaging, exploring um, with your students, giving them a voice in, in the process. It helps you really think about what it looks like. Sounds like, feels like all of those, the tangible, like what is this doing for us? I really love this framework. It's very nice. I do too. And when you go to, when you go to Catlin Tucker's websites, uh, there's, she's done really just a wonderful job. There's blog posts, uh, videos that are like, you know, three to four minutes long that you can kind of, that you can kind of absorb quickly. So make, make use of this link for sure. Uh, but we'll, we'll come back to this when we're sharing out our, um, our sample lessons. So you can kind of see how we engage, how we use this 5E model. Uh, not all of it, but like parts of it in this, in this lesson that we're going to share. So look here, here we are. This is this is like our framework that we've kind of like dreamed up um, for 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 planning for your week, right? Like you you start at the very beginning, like the, with the onboarding. Um, you, you check in, make sure that you have all your all your check marks, all your boxes ticked, so that you're well prepared and, and positioned to to construct a quality lesson. You check in with your friends, and if if your friends aren't using it, maybe this isn't what you want to use, right? Like, because we're also considering the capacity and uh, of our communities. Um, and and if you're the only one using Zabelzork, like that's you don't want to do that one. Maybe it's not the right choice. <laughs> I mean, it's got a cool name. Um, you, if you're um, looking at a, a piece of ed tech and you're trying to decide, like, should I use it or should I not, and and you're still on the fence, the triple E is a great way to, to a great tool for you to use to evaluate. And then finally, like, well, how do you, what do you hang your instruction on uh, for that week? Um, there's the five E template. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Yeah. Oh, there's our guy. There he is. See, just log on to the thing and do that thing 47 times and log into the other, right? We don't want to, nobody wants to live like that. Nobody does. There's our new goal. Don't, don't be that guy. Yeah. All right. I love that guy. So uh, you took care of yourself. You have some semblance of order. You have a checklist. You have a template. You have some resources to go to to get the best ed tech for you. Uh, you're ready to crash and burn or be very successful or some combination of both, which is my whole life. Uh, and you're going to accept that and move on when it happens. Um, but honestly, the more you're prepared, the the you're ready to move in, right? You're going to make these asynchronous and synchronous choices. You're going to take those learning goals and you're going to run with them. So on the on the next slide. Uh, Chris is going to show you my madness. This is my madness. On the left hand side, this was me scrambling throughout March into the spring where I had eight students that would talk to me total out of my whole class. And then I caught I caught like four more on Snapchat. They would only talk to me there. So I got me a Snapchat. We did math on there and it was a mess. And we had always used Google Slides in the classroom, but for some reason they could not handle the Google Slides. So we transitioned to this Google Doc. So uh, Chris, if you could open version two of my Google Doc, this became the go-to every week. My district had to send out our materials a week ahead of time. So this was the whole week and I would edit it for each next week. It had a video walkthrough of me saying, here are your learning goals. Um, it was just supposed to be a place where parents could go, uh, where students could go. And it was like the be all end all, like here's the message of the week. And I was only changing certain parts of it. Uh, the beginning is a hyperlinked uh, title where you can go and find the resources within the document. I used very specific visual cues. You're finding this in Google Classroom. You're finding this on Flipgrid. You're finding this on the website. Uh, and I try to give very specific time increments, which is something I learned from Chris, actually. So you'll see that on his stuff as well. I also learned from Chris that color is important. So we were differentiating the color of the different um, content areas. This is where I landed. This is what I went with because at some point you had to stop making choices and you had to just kind of like, right. like do something that stayed the same for them because consistency is important. Um, 
So this works well enough for my sixth graders. I don't think that it's gonna be what I need for the fall. So uh, if you wanna show them my new week plan slide, Chris, I'm going for a very simplified, <laughs> uh, very visual, concise uh, week plan. So this would come out on Friday and then we would have daily slideshows that I could use to guide specific learning tasks. But this will come out every week, the week before, that's what my district wants. It will give the download, it will have the links to the slideshows we're going to use. Uh, my district is actually transitioning to Microsoft Teams, but we still have Google Drive, so I'm using it until they tell me I can't. Um, so for this, this is like what I'm, what I'm imagining for my first, my first week with my students. How am I gonna get them to our calendar? How am I going to get them into everything? Uh, where are they gonna go for stuff? So I, this is me trying to work that out. I'm using color, I'm using links, I'm, I'm using repeated links in all the places so they can't miss it. Uh, and this is what I'm teaching for the first few days of school, which for me will be distance learning. Yeah, Ellen, I, I really, what I really like about this is at the very, on the first slide, it's like you're defining what the different things are, right? Like that's right. your key. And then you just keep using them over, over and, over and over and over again. Over. Yeah, yes, right. this is a walkthrough of Mrs. Brooks telling you what to do. This is how you get on the thing and you talk to Mrs. Brooks. <laughs> this is where you find the actual assignment. And right. I've here's, chosen- Here's the Google Classroom links, yeah. right? So like all this, th this is really, so I, this is not going to be your final version, right? Like week two is going to look different than week one. Like we I already know that. Uh, probably. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you're welcome to have this when you open it, you can make a copy for yourself. Um, I believe, uh, the, uh, this is the, this is what I'm doing. So the biggest problem with engagement I'm hoping is going to be solved by the fact that students know that this is real school that they're being credited for, which is a big change from the, the spring. Um, we're sort of transitioning from what we were doing with small slide decks per content area. We're transitioning to large notebooks. So this is like the major bend. So Lucy Calkins is, is literacy curriculum. She goes in bends. So the first bend takes like two months, right? So this is all the, all the ELA literacy stuff in one like huge slideshow that we can work through piece by piece. And I can say from slide 12 to 15, from this slide to this slide, and they're chunked and they're colorful and they're good. So you can look at that on your own time, of course. I'm really expecting to transition from one, two, three meetings that no one shows up to a day to <laughs> several that are targeted. Here's 10, yep. 15 minutes. This is what I'm telling you to do. I will be here if you need me. Send me a message, I'll be live. Whatever you need as you're working, put them in small groups, um, but give them the learning target, give them the resources, and then have me as a fallback. Um, so this is sort of my transition. I'm really relying on Epic for uh, shared reading experiences. I'm really relying on Flipgrid for shared discourse spaces where they can have conversations with one another that don't have to happen in real time. And I'm really looking uh, for Khan Academy to fill some of those, those math gaps because I'm, I'm a little worried about math and doing math online. Right, and c considering our guy up here in the corner, right, like our community and really ourselves, um, we what I what I like so much about what Ellen has has done here is like check out the bottom, right? Like in in the spring, it was really mostly asynchronous, and she's designing something that's going to have a lot more synchronous support. Yeah. So that that could look different, right? Every single day, it's it probably her routine is going to have some right. like some some frameworks that that happen regularly but it's going to have to shift and and be really flexible for her needs um yeah ellen this is just lovely 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 um, so this is this is just me thinking for now and we have some examples for you for different grade levels as well so this technically i'm in elementary which is crazy but that's my district as a first grade teacher for many 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 years i would do the same thing i would do the same thing with a lot less text and a lot more videos of me right Hi friends, remember this is how you get into Epic and the video of how to do it, the tutorial right on the slide. So um, this is just a sliding scale, right? So if you're, if you're working with special education students, English language learners, yes, that's where you take out some of the words and you push in a lot more of the visuals and the videos and the walkthroughs for sure. And this weekly, I know you mentioned this before, but I just want to bring it back because I saw a couple of questions in the chat. Like this weekly plan, you, you just, you keep moving backward, right? You just duplicate it, you yep. copy it, copy and, you, it. and then, then you plug in the new Change pieces. a couple things, send it right. back out. Don't so the keep reinventing. Yeah, so your workload is really high at the beginning, and then you're able to like, 
Yeah. And, and you've got your teams, right? So you've got people that, right. People on your, people, your hallway people. Yes. Uh, my hallway people. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, I think that our community up here in the corner is going to appreciate like the, the consistencies and, and, um, and, uh, and, and the repetitiveness, repetitive, repetitiveness of this plan, right? Like that's really important. Yeah. I mean, we got into our routines and, and, uh, in our classrooms and we need to get into our routines at a distance too. I know that um, karma is with us. Karma, if you know how, if you can help people, they're asking for a link that does the immediate like force copy. I forgot that was a thing. I don't know how to do that very well because I'm still learning. <laughs> but uh, if you have the capacity, that would be helpful. Just a little shop. So Chris, tell us about your classroom. So, uh, so I don't know why my mic is giving everybody such a hard time tonight. I apologize, but uh, that's why I'm, I'm holding it up here, but just bear with me. <laughs> I, know. Um, I know, right? It's, it's so bizarre. Anyway, um, I, I want to start with like school level communication. Um, one thing that we learned really quickly is that our community was looking at like, looking at us like this as a school and as a district uh, that first week in March, because there were like 18 super long emails every single day um, that, said a lot, but also not a lot. So one thing that we uh, transitioned to really quickly is that uh, as a school, we, um, we started organizing and, and hosting all of our information on, on a website. Uh, and then there was one email that went out a week from our administrators. And within that email was a link to this, uh, to this website. And then families that needed to kind of go through and like really look for look for things granularly they could then go like okay well what's my kid doing in eighth grade on tuesday right it's like what are they doing for science and then they could see their directions right here like hey kids it's in google classroom hey families if you want to see here's a slide deck right here so i really that was really good for our community um it it it, it kind of helped especially at the beginning kind of reduce everybody's anxiety by reducing our total number of communications. Uh, I expect that this fall we're going to continue that same path uh, because it really was very efficient. There will be, I'm sure, iterations that, uh, that, that improves. Uh, I want to show you the slide deck here um, that my team and I developed last uh, through lots and lots of iterations. This is the very last week of school. Um, and remember back in those 5E framework, you're going to see some of those E's pop up here too. So if you want to link to this, you, um, I just I link to it right from here where it says middle school um, slide deck, uh, if you want to follow, follow me along. Um, I just thought I was super clever that this was online weekly learning, so OWLs, right? But like there was like one kid that thought that was hilarious and like the other, other 149 just uh, didn't really enjoy that. But as Ellen was saying, like a lot of this was repetitive. So slide two, like it, it just, the only thing that changed were the number of the big ideas from this week. Um, the directions about how we're going to use colors as PSYOP strategies for our, for our um, EL, EL learners. Um, those, were, those were just carryovers from things that we had been doing in, uh, in school. And then there's going to be a lot of things that just feel familiar here, right? So you're going to be like, okay, learning targets. Yeah, this is what we did last week. This is what we're doing this week. There were visual cues to kind of like help, help students out. Um, there was a review from things that we did last week. I used Edpuzzle because kids have been using Edpuzzle since they were in sixth grade. I'm an eighth grade teacher. Um, you could see the, the online interactive with the explain and elaborate. So this was, you know, like this was me hanging, hanging my lesson on those five E's. Um, I used, we used green. So whenever students were inputting um, their ideas, it, were in, it was in these green boxes and in a stroke of genius, um, because if you've ever tried to grade anything in Google Classroom, it's, it's so hard to read on your laptop. It's so small. So like if you just highlight it as yellow, and excuse me, highlight it yellow, whenever they, whenever they write anything, it shows up as super bright yellow. So Easy. yeah. Game changer. Yeah. So maybe, and, and you're like an early career educator, Ellen. So like I'm, I'm seasoned. So like I, at first <laughs> I, I was like, Oh, I got to go to the eye doctor, but uh, it, it made me feel better no. to, to realize it wasn't just me. I can't tell you how many of my sixth graders, the ones that bothered to log in actually were like, I did it. And it was blank. And I was like, uh, you didn't do anything. You turned it in there. And then they're like, Oh, oops. I'm like, yeah, oops. <laughs> right. Right. So, um, you can see some more of the, the 5e here. Now, like one of the things that we did, we, this was the very last unit of the year. So we were having kids evaluate, um, you know, uh, evaluate data. 
and um, and and come up with a you know a, a possible solution. So they had a couple of, of different choices. Um, they could have they could have gone along with like plastics in the oceans. We've been talking about climate change. Uh, they could have been talk they could have uh, used data to discuss police brutality. We've been talking about that in our um, social emotional like check ins during our, our home rooms. Um, they could have used data to talk about pollution in the Great Lakes since we, since we are a Great Lakes state. Yeah. Um, or they could have uh, they could have evaluated um, you know criminal justice reform using data from these uh, from these clips. At the end, they kind of made their own plan and then finally shared out the like a, right so like this is kind of like your exit ticket. Right. So there were just like so many pieces that were kind of, that were familiar, right? Like they were they were instructional uh, teaching moves that we uh, as as educators use and reuse and, and right. you know all the time that ended up getting integrated into the slide deck. And there's a lot of things here that we're gonna reuse like, like organizationally uh, right. into the fall. But the one thing that we do wanna kind of pay attention to is that, you know, there's just like a, this huge need, you know, it was, it was talked about very, it was talked about at the, in the introduction um, around social emotional, uh, you know, CRT and UDL issue, uh, issues, right? Like culturally responsive teaching and understanding uh, like universal design, design theory. Like we just need to like make sure that our, our teams are like considering those options and, and including them whenever possible. So we, we know that our capacity is finite, right? Like, and that's why we, we really need to like leverage our human, our, our human, uh, or human resources so that way we're not feeling responsible for doing it all on our own. Right. Just like Ellen, you know, I'm moving, I'm, we're moving uh, the expectation from mostly asynchronous to mostly synchronous and uh, in incorporating these kinds of ideas. Right. So, so these are super yeah. important and super helpful and super available for you. Um, clicking on Ed Justice, Universal Design for Learning, these are resources that help you with all these big topics, the engagement, expression, um, and this is what we need, right? We need an understanding of how to meet these objectives and these targets that we have that aren't in the curriculum that we're still responsible for. Right, and NEA has been working, you know, this, the, the, we, if you click on this link, it'll open up to the NEA at Justice website. There's just, there's so much great information there. Um, it was, it was, you know, developed thinking about face-to-face -face instruction, obviously, but we, but you, you know, as teachers, we can always take a lesson and modify it to make it fit. So right. please make, please make use, and, and if you're unaware, mm -hmm. uh, check it out. Uh, just to help you think about collaboration, this is a huge thing in my district. We've been working really hard. Uh, the district has put us into teams across the district. It's a pretty small district, so there's like not a tremendous amount of us working on, say, those Lucy Calkin slides, which I wish I could give you, but I cannot. They do not belong to me. They're developed by teachers across the district. We worked in small teams. We were put onto committees. We developed curriculum. Um, there's some examples here of using some shared spaces to uh, create things together and then uh, take from that and put in whatever platform or website or LMS learning management system you need. Uh, do not reinvent the wheel, you guys. There are places that have blended units, lessons at your level, in your subject, already created for you to take and tweak. Go to Better Lesson, which was an NEA uh, member sort of benefit created partnership with uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, the OER. These are great resources. It really boils down to you having to make the choice depending on your role. Do I integrate into a pre-existing community? Do I choose and share a platform with my fellow teachers? The examples here are from our specials area teachers, our, our music, gym, uh, all of those beautiful the art teachers, the STEAM teachers working together to give children collaborative spaces. Uh, and this is this is what it comes down to. Are all the educators going to find the students in their in their grouping? Like, can we put all the seventh graders in one space? Can we put all the second graders in one space and we each go in and select the ones that need the extra help and give them a little extra and do what we need to without making the kids log in a bunch of places? Or is it more effective in my community to have the child belong to several different classes or groups, right? Uh, three classes in Seesaw, two in Canvas, whatever you're using, and have only the adults that need to push in, push in. Uh, 
these models are really important for you to stop and address and think about in collaboration with your teams because one is going to be more heavy lifting for you than another uh, but one might work better for your demographic and your students especially if you are someone that does not have a core class of students but see many students from different groups <laughs> yeah and I, I like this visual too. Like it took me a second, like Ellen had to, Ellen talked me through it the first time, yeah. but I, I, it's, a, it's really a good way to think about like how you're going to leverage your expertise and those, right. like, those, those teachers on your team to support your students. So I, I want to, we want to take a second and just show you some, like, we, we need to like also consider um, our digital organization right. because before, like if my Google drive was a hot mess, only I knew it was a hot mess. And if I couldn't find something, I'd always, I'd send that embarrassing email. Ellen, remember that thing you sent me? Can yeah. you send it again? And then somebody else would find it for me. Right. So, but now like I got to do better, right? Because my, my file management is also my students file management, right. which is also uh, my parents file management. So like we, we need to be thoughtful, uh, you know, deliberate in fact, and, uh, and, and follow a plan that's cohesive across your school. If, if, you, right. can, if you can move it that far, if not start with yourself and, and start right. with your team. Otherwise he, he's coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> So I love this guy so much. I'm, I want to meet him in real life someday. As an elementary teacher, your number one goal is going to be simplicity, routine, uh, similar graphics. You do not want to switch these up. You choose the icon. You choose the symbol that means what it means, and it never changes. Your child can see that and understand what it means. It's going to take a lot of time and scaffolding. This is an example of the learning management system Schoology and how it was used for Notice how they used color, notice how they used words, notice how they used stars as the specific. This is what you do on your own. And there's targeted language here. Class meeting means online with me. Independent means on your own. Uh, this is scaffolded for parents. Obviously, if you're elementary, your parents are going to have to have the same ease of access to this as your students do. And uh, give these two ladies a follow. Veronica Cho is new to Twitter and Anna Gonzalez. They're actually running a webinar right this very they second. They are. And they the developed MBA. all of these visuals. So give mm -hmm. them a shout out on how amazing and brilliant and beautiful they are. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, look, look at what they've done here, right? Even that tiny little star will yeah. help our youngest learners be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's me. I'm the star, right? So uh, give them a follow and um, hopefully we'll, your paths right. will cross. But uh, your middle school example, I want you to notice like there, it's very similar, isn't it? So like if you're thinking about your consumer, right, your, your community, um, there's, there's like there's a method to our madness. So we're going to see the same kinds of colors. We're going to see the same kind right. of formatting. The, you're going to see the same kind of like uh, graphics, uh, yeah. but, but for a more secondary audience, obviously. Uh, and and everything is going to be, be loaded in so that way right. uh, and, and labeled. So this is synchronous. This is asynchronous, right? This is targeted. Very, very, exactly. And specific. being very specific and very uh, clear about your expectations. Um, I also like uh, very I like how the, the, the assignments are numbered. And, um, and so that way students know, okay, I do this first, yeah. I do the second, I do this third. Moving on to high school, uh, again, very similar to, to elementary, very similar to, to, to middle school. Um, obviously, it's getting, you're, you're drilling down, there's, there's some more practice, right? But as we kind of like get into these daily folders, we're going gonna, gonna, to, I'm going to, go into this folder here on the next slide. So that just got moved up. So you can see the weekly schedule here for, your, for our high schoolers, but look, it's the same language, right? Do we meet together? Yes, what time? This time, right? Like here's the, here's the asynchronous, right? Like the things that you work on on your own. Um, there, there is like a pro tip that we wanna like uh, clear out or just like bring to your attention. Um, some of you might already be thinking like, okay, well, if everything's labeled 3.1, what is that going to look like if, if my LMS is, my learning management system is talking to my grade book and it flows over? It's kind of a mess. So like talk, use, your, um, use your assignment before your title. So that way, you know, it's like adding and subtracting polynomials 3.1, right? So that way it'll flow over into your grade book and it's, it's easier for students to see. Some teachers, we like to label and write everything, assignment one, two, three, four, all the way like in a table of contents, like obviously do that too. There's gonna be some tweaks that are gonna make it, you know, more meaningful for you, your team, your school. Yes. Oh, oh. this is a big one. Talk about this one, Chris. 
Yeah, come on, and, and we also have, need to be meaningful with our students. If you go into your Google Drive, those of you that have Google Classrooms, how many things got turned in uh, in the fall that just say untitled? So talk to, your, talk to your students and make that part of, your, part of your instruction, right? Last name, first name, assignment title, right? And have them use the same assignment title that you're using it in, the, in, the, yeah. uh, in, in your learning management system. Whatever it is, have them write their name on it. <laughs> my gosh. Oh my goodness. We're like nearing the end. I can't believe that it's here. Oh, it's eight o'clock. We are almost here. Please, please, please. Your tools and your plans need to work for you. There is no right answer. There's many, 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 many right answers. There is no magic. There is no, there's only what worked, what didn't work, what worked at first, but doesn't now and the adaptations that you can make for you and your students and your people. So as you're thinking about um, additional webinars like this, the NEA is offering two more uh, on the schedule as it is now facilitating quality practice and providing accommodations and scaffolding online. So if you're interested, please sign up. We appreciate um, you so much making the time. Absolutely. Thank you for spending an hour with us. And Ellen, if you don't mind dropping the, um, the exit ticket in the chat, it really helps inform like um, what, what worked for you, what you wish there was more of. Uh, we know this was just a broad overview of like one specific pathway that 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 with some ideas that may might work for you um but it, we we will go through your feedback and look for it for sure like oh someone said they're inspired to be a marigold i'm so proud of you <laughs> if you're ever feeling walnutty send me a message i'll help you give you a little <laughs> little pet back in the step now look, okay, one last thing before everybody leaves. Um, if you, there, there are people in this room who have expertise that, and, and you are a teacher leader and, and you're ready to share, there is an application to expand the ranks of uh, teacher leaders as these uh, distance learning educators. If you're interested, click on the link, um, fill it out by, next, by this Sunday, and uh, we, we look forward to the opportunity to, to review your application. So at the very end, uh, probably uh, in, in the next handful of days, uh, the NEA will, will post the recording of this webinar uh, to this website, uh, yeah. nea.org slash webinars. Uh, if you've got any questions, hit us up in hashtag NEA Ed Practice, yes. or you can send an email directly to the NEA member rapid response at nea.org. We know this was so quick. We tried to give you as much as we could. Here's our information. Seriously, it might take us a minute. Be, be patient if possible. If we don't get back to you, send us another message. But we really are here to help. And we, we've spent a lot of time trying to find, find good things and find help. And, and we know that we couldn't cover all the bases. But we'll, we'll help you try to find answers if you need them. So, you know, we're here for you. We're your miracles. Absolutely. And um, we, we're going to try to hit, a, there's still like a few questions left over in the Q&A. Yeah. Um, we don't have anything specific for librarians at the moment, um, but if you're an ed tech expert and you want to build something, like go ahead and fill out a fill out an application. We'd love we'd love to be able to expand yeah. the offering. I would highly suggest the multi class model for you librarians. <laughs> uh, state affiliate in the exit ticket. Um, like, are you like are you Michigan? MEA, AEA, MNEA, like what's your state? Yeah, just so that we know where, if we missed anybody, we can hunt them down, you know, like, let us help you. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen will do that. She's going to do that. I will. Uh, I'll find you. There's a question in, in there, Ellen, that's uh, yeah. from Grace uh, Santorino. She says, is there a variation for, uh, for elementary, maybe K2? I know. Maybe I know. <sighs> I would say if you have a choice of learning management system, I would say use Seesaw every time. It has a built-in translation device for your EL families. It allows for really great uh, images, graphics. You can record a video of yourself right on there. Everything is linked very easily. You can create activities and see which students have attempted them and not. It's probably the, the neatest uh, place for you. My suggestion to you is whatever material you're creating, if it's a website, if it's a paper packet, if it's a, it doesn't matter what it is, like pick your, pick your visuals just like you would in your classroom, right? This game has this picture on it. The, the templates have the picture of the template on it and the picture of the template is in the pocket chart for choices. You need to reimagine those in this digital space so students can see and know exactly what they're allowed to do without having to access the text. That's the best that we can give you. I know. I wish I was still a first grade teacher, Chris. This is a horrible time to change my grade level. <laughs> Look, and just so you know, we, we, we never get to the slides at the end, but there's lots of really great resources so there. 
yeah, so like, please feel free, use those, share those, just remind your friends that you're getting that from your, uh, as a benefit of your right. EA membership. Um, Catherine Culver is asking about um, special education support. Um, we'd really recommend that you come to that webinar in two weeks. Um, it, it's, it was written from an EL perspective, but there's a lot of there's a lot of carryover. Um, it, it is it is a special supporting special education students um, in in a brick and mortar is a huge is a huge lift uh, with, that is under resourced um, and right. So it, it is that there there are there are lots of um there are lots of, it, it's problematic right like so many things there's so many challenges but they might give you some good ideas if you come back on the 20 was that the 24th yeah yeah um yeah another special education come back on the 24th uh, you yeah, know see if you can get some good ideas there Remember, as a special educator, you have the option for all of these platforms, whether it's Schoology or Seesaw or Google Classroom or whatever it is, to be added as a co-educator potentially and be able to go in and interact with your students that way without having to create your own space. If you have a collaborative team, that might be an option for you. I'm going to drop in the, the chat. I just sent this to, I think oh, her name dropped. I can't see it. Uh, but here's the here's the flyer for the for the next two webinars. Please come. Uh, any special recommendations or ideas for health and physical education teachers in middle school? Uh, yes. Um, if I, in my personal world and opinion, I would definitely create a space that is a collection of of videos, of encouragement, of sharing. Uh, our One of our uh, phys ed teachers, he actually created a YouTube channel and he would like model different activities and then students would be able to communicate with him on those and it was really kind of special and really lovely. Yeah, we are, are same, same with us, like our uh, special, or excuse me, our, our um, PE teachers really did an amazing job coming up with really creative ways for students yeah. to interact outside. And, and they would actually share that with their, um, with the teachers in the school. And a lot of times we'd kind of like integrate that into our lessons as like brain breaks. And yeah. um, I mean, we weren't doing that in March and April, but like May, June, you're like, oh, that could be a good idea. And we tried it. And I have to say, like, yeah, I really enjoyed that. As co-educators, I know the notifications can be overwhelming. Um, you, can, you can manage them. You can turn a lot of them off. Um, that's just one of the, the hazards. Yes, I, I realize that's a reality. There's a question about where do we get the slide deck. Um, if you just click on that link, bit.ly slash NEA planning, um, you can save a copy to your, to your drive that is, that is yours. The bit.ly will stay active, so as long as you can remember, remember it, like, this is this is yours. This is yours to use, yours to share. You can also see that Bitly anytime on the recorded webinar. It's on the front slide. It's there for you. Um, Chris, I'm going to jump in a second. There's lots of people asking about certificates of attendance and PD credits and all of those kinds of things. We honestly were not prepared for that, which is foolish on our part. We should have thought about that. But if you send um, an email either to me, I'll put my email uh, in the chat again, or to the mem member rapid response email, we'll make sure that you get a certificate. So um, just uh, I'll put my email in the, in the chat and we'll go from there. Please know, um, I, I know some people have tried to give us email addresses. That is really hard <laughs> because there's been over 2,000 people on the webinar. So if you can send um, those to us, that would be great. You can access the recording right there where Ellen Brooks just put it in. Thank you, Ellen. Hi, <laughs> Rita. So the recording will be available on the NEA website under their, um, their webinars. So it's literally like nea.org slash webinars. Mm -hmm. And they'll yeah, all be there for you. Yeah, and share it with people, right? Like, it'd be great. Yes. You, you could watch this at, at like, you know, ha, you know, double speed, and, and it would only take thirty <laughs> minutes. Right. <laughs> you can you can pause it and like turn the volume up and down and up and down and you know move it so you can actually see the cat. You know, all the great fun of doing things digitally, which are just. Uh, so there's a question in the chat about do you have any schedules to share? And like honestly, I. I the, the the short answer like Ellen and I talked a lot about this and we, <laughs> no. 
and and we we reached out to people and Again. it's like everybody's everybody's schedule is so wildly different because everybody's hybrid looks so different and my district they haven't even ratified their plan for the fall yet they're actually voting tonight so my district hasn't even fully settled on on the plan so it's really hard just keep in mind the marigold slides right and like managing your routine and your space and whatever the district throws at you 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 make fit into your life as well whether you have your own children yes set the timer, log off, go check with your kids. Like that's important too. Yes. And email, email Anne, if you need the certificates, um, I'm going to drop the, it's the NEA rapid response email. You can email that directly too. I'll Everything you saw today is in the slideshow, all of it, every link. And the chat, I will make sure that we post the chat with the recording on the, the, um, okay the site, but I need you to give me a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Anne. I, it was going so we couldn't, oh, I'm so glad we had our facilitators here. Shout out to the facilitators. Wow. Uh, facilitators. I would just like to say we had over 175 questions. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are killing it. I was, I love you guys. It's so well. Thank you so much for helping. I'm going to turn off the recording at this point. Okay. Yeah.